I would say Spotify values that a lot more than being able to write math proofs as a data scientist or being able to prove out the exact algorithms or statistics that you're using. That's like one differentiating factor I've noticed with data scientists at Spotify. Welcome back to another Recall by Data IQ video. My name is Kenji and I'm a data scientist and YouTuber who makes data and machine learning related content. Today, I'm interviewing Jeff Lee, who's a senior data scientist at Spotify one of the largest music streaming platforms in the world. Before Spotify, Jeff was a data scientist at DoorDash, and he was able to land seven tech data science job offers at the beginning of the pandemic, which was one of the toughest data science job markets in history. So you know he knows his stuff. Today, we discuss how he landed his current job, what types of data projects are important at Spotify, and what Jeff does in his specific role. All right, Jeff, thank you for coming in and chatting with me today. Cool, thanks for having me. So you're a senior data scientist at Spotify. Mm -hmm. I'm interested, how did you actually land that job? I just went to their office, knocked on the door, and just got on my knees, and then just begged them <laughs> for the job, and they, they gave it to me. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. I had some experience, so I already had about three to four years of experience going into my job at Spotify. So I had a friend refer me to the position, referred me to a couple positions, you know, passed the interviews, did well, uh, ended up selecting Spotify out of, say, a number of job offers that I had at the time. What were some of the, maybe the specifics that helped you prepare for those interviews? Was it doing leak code? What were some of the things that helped you feel that you were prepared for the technical as well as the more intuitive or case-based side of interviewing? So I think it really depends on what the interview is testing. So ML, applied ML cases to just solving pandas problems to say data structures and algorithms. It's a little tricky because there's like a lot of different things that you could be studying. The way I generally approach it is with every interview, uh, I always message the recruiter and just ask them, hey, what should I expect? I would say maybe about 60, 70% of the time they'll tell you, 30% of the time they won't. So I would just say, ask the recruiter, worst thing they can say is, hey, we can't tell you anything. Uh, usually they'll tell me, hey, yeah, there's a presentation. They're gonna look at your communication skills or hey, there's gonna be an ML case. Once they tell you, then it gives you a really clear, clear path on what to focus on. That's awesome. And so at Spotify, what types of use cases do they have for data science? Like what's, mm -hmm. what are you guys using machine learning AI to do on, on the job? Everybody who loves Spotify really loves Spotify for its personalization. So you can expect that Personalization is a huge investment within the company. Discover weekly playlists. Those are powered by machine learning algorithms. When you're kind of scrolling through the homepage, you know, many of those things are also powered by machine learning algorithms. On top of that, Spotify is running thousands of A-B tests and experiments throughout the year. So we are utilizing a lot of statistics. We're utilizing a lot of causal inference to uh, detect causal effects when we can't run experiments. Yeah, throughout the product, throughout the whole app, data science is really used quite a bit. Amazing, and so if data science is being used quite a bit, what types of tools can someone expect to be working with if they were to, to get a job at Spotify, for example? Python, SQL, I think those are pretty standard across most companies uh, within data science. Generally expect 90% or more probably use Python. That's like the general coding language of choice. Uh, usually in the industry, there's really kind of two or three big players on the data warehousing side, Snowflake uh, and Google BigQuery. Uh, Spotify does use Google BigQuery as their core data warehouse. I have used Snowflake in the past as well. Tableau is a big favorite. That's also a big industry standard. Something, uh, obviously you'd mentioned you're making recommendations for a lot of people. There's mm -hmm. massive volumes of data. How do you manage such a quick moving and high volume data flow? When there is a lot of data, I would say this starts to get outside of my sphere of ability. Spotify has a lot of analytics engineers. And so you can think of analytics engineers as the intersection between a data scientist and a data engineer, where uh, an analytics engineer can probably do more insights type of analysis, more so than a data engineer, but probably a little less technical than the data engineer. So Spotify invests pretty heavily in, in data engineer, uh, sorry, analytics engineers as well. As data science and the data sphere are developing, many companies are now interested in investing into automating, systematizing, and elevating AI across their companies. This is where Data IQ comes in. They offer automated tools for data cleaning pipelines, 
full funnel machine learning from feature selection to deployment. DataIQ is a platform for everyday AI that systematizes the use of data for business results. By using DataIQ, you're able to create, share, and reuse applications that leverage data and machine learning to extend and automate decision-making. DataIQ also allows you to scale AI safely and effectively to deliver advanced analytics using the latest techniques. Learn more about the platform from the link in the description below. So what team do you specifically work on and what types of problems are you trying to solve? So right now I work on the ads business insights team and where we were, are mainly focused on podcasting. A lot of projects related to trying to understand how we can best monetize our catalog of podcasts within the platform. So naturally a lot of my work is like forecasting, hey, how do we forecast the number of ad inventory that we have and using causal inference to understand, hey, if we like change the ads within a podcast, how does that actually impact user experience? Those are really kind of my two, two areas of focus right now, uh, forecasting and, and causal inference. So what's your favorite part about your job? It seems like you get to do incredibly interesting work, work on big problems, but mm -hmm. either within that or just in general, what's your favorite part of, of working at Spotify? The big difference I've seen with Spotify compared to other companies is uh, a big culture of autonomy. So. A lot of the work that we do is very self-driven. In order to be successful at Spotify, you really have to be able to self-drive your work, be able to define your own roadmaps, define your own project plans. Generally, managers at Spotify don't really micromanage at all and don't really handhold you as much. So I would say that, that's what I like about Spotify. It fits how I work very well. A lot of autonomy, you have a lot of freedom to kind of move in the directions that, that you find interesting. Also, you know, it has to be valuable to the business, but that's kind of the, the core benefit that I've seen. And so I guess the last question I have, it, it's really related to that. If someone wanted to work at Spotify, what advice would you give them? In general, I think the most important thing is really to be solving problems within the company. So if you can show that you have the skill set and you have the experience that can tackle the problems that this team is experiencing, then uh, you, and you need to just be able to show that through the interview and different ways of showing it that is probably the best way to, to, to get in. If you have more experience, you can probably apply. If you're younger or like I say, just trying to get into the field, uh, you're gonna probably have to hustle a bit, write cold emails, try to get referrals. Once you're in the door, you'll just get evaluated based off of your presentation, based off your technical skills, based off your experiences. We're hiring for a lot of positions, so recruiters will tend to pass you to different teams if they think your skill set's a better fit for other teams uh, within the company. A product manager, I think her name is Emily at Spotify. She actually loves Spotify so much that she actually cre uh, created a resume in the form of the Spotify format. And it actually like looked like it was within the Spotify app. And I thought that was really cool. And then and it actually was, you know, showing us how she was like really excited about the, the product itself. So she actually literally went above and beyond to show that, hey, she was like really interested in the product. A lot of people don't do that. So you're going to yeah. name your first child Spotify? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, absolutely. If you're able to be technically great and be able to explain your technical details very well, I would say Spotify values that a lot more than being able to write math proofs as a data scientist or being able to prove out the exact algorithms or statistics that you're using. That's like one differentiating factor I've noticed with data scientists at Spotify. All right, Jeff, this was awesome. Is there anything else you wanna add? Not too much. I would say that Spotify is hiring a lot. So if you are interested in a data scientist position, uh, check out the Spotify careers website. There are many, many teams that are hiring for data scientists and including my team as well. Amazing. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing your insights, Jeff. Cool, yeah, thanks for having me.